Welcome back to part three of making a fair bend Sykes, like the one that I made six years ago. It's a World War II commando dagger. Got a wild history, and we're finishing it up in this episode. I've got to start with a little hand sanding on the blade. is hand sanded, ready for sand blasting. But we still got to finish up our other components. We need to make the guard, and I've lost it. Jamie, I've lost my nut. Oh dear. There it is. And a nut for tightening it all together. It's tiny, no wonder you're so squeaky. <laughs> Guard's gonna be out of stainless. Nut's gonna be out of something. I haven't yet figured it out. Let's go. Jamie, do you by chance remember when yesterday afternoon you said, how long do you think this is going to take? And I said, oh, 20 minutes and uh, we'll be squared away with this. Remember that? What, the fit up? Yeah, hasn't quite been 20 minutes, has it? I'm trying to fit this thing up. I need this fit up, I need that fit up and we are many hours deep. The trouble is, is I have just been pulling my hair out trying to find out where it's contacting. I'll die come this, shove it in there. I've been shining a flashlight down it and I can never ever work out where the actual problem spots are. This fit up has been quite the challenge. So I've just made the guard as well as our little pommel nut. It all fits together so beautifully and snugly. I love it. That is gonna sit on there, but uh, the thread is too long. Let me cut that down real fast. How did I cut it too long? Now that is a knife. And you know what? This is the first blade that I've ever made where I can put the components on in any direction and it still fits just the same. I've always had to have it, you know, like, oh, this is this side, that's that side. This one is potentially the most accurate blade I've ever made. I am so thrilled. It's like one of the nicest knives I've ever made. I can't believe it. It feels good, look at that. Ooh, them spiral flutes. I'm just going nuts here. <laughs> All right, Jamie, where do we put a touch mark? A little bit on the guard, eh? Can't really, I really have to not screw it up. Can't go making things and not putting touch marks on them. I do that too often. <laughs> Oh, I actually quite like it. Sorted. Quick interruption to thank today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. It's a virtual private network service that has thousands upon thousands of servers in over 61 countries that are there to act as an intermediary between you and the websites you browse, giving you enhanced privacy, flexibility and freedom on the internet, and improved security from hackers. I find it especially useful when I'm traveling and I need to use public Wi-Fi networks at hotels because a very common hack is a man in the middle attack where somebody sets up a fake Wi-Fi network that looks legitimate, you connect onto it, and it looks all good and dandy. You're accessing the websites you want to browse, but in fact, everything's being routed through this hacker. They can steal your information, all your personal data, and that's just something you don't want. But since Nord encrypts the data that goes between your device and their servers, they wouldn't be able to see anything anyway. Now with the handy dandy app for iOS, Android, Mac and PC, you can select which country in the world the websites you browse think you're browsing from. It's risk free with a 30 day money back guarantee and they've got another great deal for you at nordvpn.com forward slash forge. Every purchase of a two year plan is at a huge discount with four additional months for free. Our link in the description gets you the best deal there is currently going for NordVPN. So please check them out and let's get back to the video. All right, so next up we need to take this colorful and shiny blade and we're going to make it black as I've been saying through this project. I've got some Cerakote. It's meant to be quite a hard wearing coating and it gets used a lot 
in knives and in guns. You were also saying manifolds. I don't know what a manifold is. Like manifolds, engine blocks, that kind of thing. All of that good stuff. And this kit that I've procured involves this very pretty little thing. And it also includes an instruction manual. Now, it's quite challenging to read because it's on the 45. So I kind of got to tilt this to read left to right. It says that step one is thoroughly degreasing the part and apparently just spraying it isn't suitable. So they need to be soaked. I need some sort of receptacle. So what are you going to fill that up with? Booze. Next up, I need a rack to be able to hold this stuff in our oven. Also, to be able to hold it for sandblasting, it's gonna be my universal rack that's just gonna go everywhere with these things. And I thought we can use one of these bad boys. All right, it's been in there a good long while. Here is our rack. Plan is basically for everything to stay in here until it's all done. After it's sandblasted, this is gonna go in the oven for drying then it's gonna get painted, and then it's gonna go back in the oven for curing the paint. My hope is that it's all perfect when I sandblast it, and it's all perfect when I do all the other bits. Our blasting cabinet. Look at the professionalism. So this is what we've got for a sandblaster. His name is Clark. He makes noises. This is blasting media. So I don't know what type of a video it's gonna be, or whether it's gonna be pictures, it might be an MP3. That doesn't very much look like media to me. It looks like grit. All right, this stuff flows in here. It's definitely got sand coming through. You might be wondering why I'm gonna do it out here instead of in the grinding room. There's so much more dirt and dust flying in the air in the grinding room, and I don't want that to get on the piece either while we're sandblasting it or especially not while we're painting it. So I'm gonna do it here, wearing respirators, and then we're gonna sweep up right afterwards. What are the odds that this Incredibly secure stand holds up to the rigors of sandblasting. I love sandblasting. This is so cool. It makes everything look so pretty. Still need to blow off any remaining sand. Now we go do a little cooking. Gotta go read the instructions, actually. After sandblasting, you gotta gas out at 149 degrees Celsius. Oddly specific. It is. It's probably because it was in Fahrenheit before. Shake and bake. So what did that do, baking it? Uh, supposedly, it evaporates off any remaining liquids from the degreasing. Okie doke, so it is saying that for painting it, we're going to need a 24 to 1 ratio, 24 this, 1 that. I don't know how much paint we're actually gonna need for the project. So I guess I'll maybe just 24 times 2 is what? 48? I don't think you're gonna need that much. You don't think 50 mil? No. Okay, even for testing? No. Okay, 24 to 1. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This needs to be mixed for 5 to 10 minutes. Is it really? Five to ten minutes. Does it say that on here? Yep, it says it. Look, right. It says five to ten fourth seconds. Line, fourth, fourth line, five to ten minutes. It says five minutes. to ten seconds. You not read Cerakotium very well. Woo! I'm going to take a glove, seal it over there, and mix it like this. Wow, I'm not very good with my left hand. Now, take this, using a strainer, put it into our spray gun. There is no chance we have enough. Too much air pressure splatter. Too little air pressure splatter. Too much. Okay. Whoa. Okay, I got splatter. Too low. That looks all right, doesn't it? Should we just send it, Jamie? I forgot something. <coughs> I forgot to put a respirator on, but we're committed. I hope I got every surface. Ooh, baby! I really hope it works. All right, now we've got to cure it at 120 degrees for two hours. 
The curing has been done. It is the moment of truth. What does it all actually look like? Oh, it's looking good. It's looking super good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so happy that this coating worked so well despite being a complete amateur, complete beginner. It's sprayed on super even. All that's left to do is sharpen it and assemble it. This right here might be the piece that I'm most proud of making over the last few years. I'm thrilled, feels good in the hand, it balances right there. The blade is a bloody laser. I just can't get over how good it feels, how good it looks, and how cool it was to try so many new things. And speaking of that, we need to make a Kydex sheath for it, and we're gonna be doing it tomorrow, learning about how holsters and sheaths are made and making one for this, so stay tuned for that, and please go check out nordvpn.com forward slash forge for the whopping good deals that today's sponsor is giving you guys. And don't forget, if you need grinders and other tools and equipment, please check out alexsteelcode.com. See you on the next one, bye-bye.